All right, working to confirm here. Yes, the Pittsburgh Penguins did have a ridiculously massive comeback against the Columbus Blue Jackets on Tuesday night, coming back from four goals down, something that they have not done very much during my childhood. I'll get to that stat in a little bit. But to start off the show, I'm going to tell you why, the main reason why this team came back in this one. And no, it's not just because the Blue Jackets are bad. That's coming up right after this drop. Your Locked On Penguins, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am, of course, your host, Hunter Hodes. Follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Eleanor Penguins. Thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. Woo! I, <laughs> what a win for this hockey team. A game that should not have been that hard to win because you're playing the worst team in hockey outside of the Anaheim Ducks. But... They come back from four goals down to defeat the Columbus Blue Jackets and get two points that they needed to have. And this was the first time they have come back to win while down four goals. December 11th, 2006, per Bob Grove. He is the best Penguins historian out there. I, you know, he has all the comebacks from four goals plus down. He is the best out there. First four goal comeback since 2006. To sum that up, I was I was nine years old when the last time this team came back from four goals down to the game before that. Uh, 2005 against the Atlanta Thrashers, 7-5 to five before that, 1995, 91, 87, 86, 85, and 78. So literally only twice, before today, only twice in the Sidney Crosby of Guinea Malkin era had they come back from four goals down. Kudos to this team for staying in it. But the main reason why they came back, number 16, our nice Jewish boy here. I can say that because I am a nice Jewish man, of course. Jason Zucker. You know, where would this team be without him? Just ponder that for a second. Where would the Pittsburgh Penguins be this season without number 16? Gets his first 20-goal season with the Penguins. Gets two goals tonight. I should say he has been the heartbeat of this team all season long. And you have, you know, and you saw that on display tonight. Gets the first goal to make it 4 1. Gets another goal after um, Gensel scored to make it 4 2. He made it 4 3. And, you know, he was being chippy out there, laying his body, playing well defensively. Again, he is everything for this team. I'm. I am not, I haven't been super crazy about signing him back just because I feel like you can get better, even better value than him for next season. And they're also going to have a lot of cap space this offseason if they play their cards right, especially if they can get maybe a new general manager in here that knows what he's doing with the salary cap because Ron Hexall's not that guy. But I am really getting close to being there where he is almost a necessity to sign back. It's going to be tough because I don't, you know, how much of a discount can you really ask him to take at 5.5 million? Does he want a long-term extension? Would he take a short-term deal? I don't really know. We'll get to that during the offseason. But again, he is the main reason why they came back in this one. You look at the Penguins forward lines. You know, when Sulker was out there with Malkin and Alex Nylander, played almost nine minutes at even strength. When they were on the ice, the Penguins had 75% of the shot attempts. They also had um, 82% of the expected goals, 77% of the scoring chances, six high danger chances for, no high danger chances against, and one goal for, zero goal against. That was that line. So Zucker, just insane underlyings tonight. <clears throat> he is the heart and soul of this team right now. <clears throat> it's It really is something to behold because a lot of people had him written off coming into this season. I, I know I was bullish on him. I, I did say, and I, I, I'm going to toot my own horn on this one, 25 to 30 goals from him this season. He's at 20 right now. think he's going to get that before the end of the season. I will take the W with that. 
All he needed to do was stay healthy, and he has done exactly that. Knock on wood, of course. But what a performance from him. Um, I just – I can't you – know, as he says, like to say in the locker room, best of the year. I, I can't say enough at the way he's been playing right now. He he was the main reason why they were to come back. Um, but, you know, also Alex Nylander plays his first game as a Pittsburgh Penguin. <clears throat> just to wrap up this segment, I'll say this. There is an interesting section – of Penguin Twitter, Penguin subreddit. There's a section of fan, the fans that live or die by this player. They sim for him very hard. They, they just love him. You know, I mean, he's been in the AHL. He's not succeeded on a couple of teams. Okay. You know, they gave him a shot tonight. I, again, I haven't really been that high on him just because, you know, how many players is he better than on this team? I think we definitely got a little bit of that answer tonight because I, I think he outplayed Jeff Carter. <laughs> There's maybe a non-zero chance, maybe it's a little low, that he could be a more of an impact player than Mikhail Granlin will be um, whenever he comes back. I really liked Nylander's game tonight. Thought he did a great job um, exiting the zone with control, the defensive zone. Also did a great job entering the offensive zone with control. Got his first NHL point as a member of the Pit. Well, first point as a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins, I should say. Um, on Zucker's first goal, had a couple of nice scoring chances. I thought he was everywhere in this game. And Mike Sullivan rewarded him with nine minutes of five-on-five five ice time with Evgeny Malkin and Jason Zucker. Sullivan does not do that very often with young players. You all know that. I know that. The fact that he got that many minutes, <clears throat> even though the Penguins went 11 forwards, seven defensemen, I think that speaks volumes. Uh, now, is he going to be on this team on Thursday? I don't know. Um, Brian Rust moved out due to personal reasons. Um, looks like his wife is going into labor. They were expecting their kid any day now. Congratulations to them. Mikhail Granlin is sick. Would assume that he's probably going to be back by that game on Thursday. He probably just has a little same bug um, <clears throat> that Tristan has. But, you know, I, I liked what I saw from Neil Anderson. And the underlings were also very, <clears throat> very strong on the ice. Two goals for, zero goals against. 28 shot attempts for, nine shot attempts against, 79% expected goal share tonight from the um, Nylander, of course. I don't know. I almost just stuttered there for a second. But very, very solid job by Nylander. I will take that any day of the week when it comes to a call-up um, from Wilkesbury. You know, maybe maybe that fan club is on to something a little bit because, you know, yeah, I think some people have taken it overboard. He's been in the AHL, I think, for a reason other than – the Penguins maybe being a bit stubborn, but maybe they do have something here. Like that performance a lot tonight from number 19. But overall, again, just to wrap this up, Jason Zucker, if he doesn't score, you know, he doesn't score that goal and doesn't give this team life, um, they do not come back at all um, in this one. So um, really nice to see Zucker just continue to be awesome this season for the Penguins to potentially set himself up to get an extension. Um, <clears throat> after the season. Coming up in the next segment, we're going to get into <clears throat> the game winner, how the Penguins were also able <clears throat> to tie the game early in the third period, plus so much more from this historic win. But before we get to that, we got to talk about the official sports betting partner of Locked On, and that is FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and three strain. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So do not miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment warm with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA and locked on. All right, I'm back here in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Emerson Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So even when the game was 4-1 to going into third, I, I didn't think they had a, a prayer of coming back, even with Michael Hutchinson and net. Um, Merzlikens was apparently sick, according to the broadcast. So maybe he got the flu. Maybe he got the bug that Tristan got. Who knows? Or Mikhail Granlin. But, you know, um, Gensel scores 30 seconds in. 
really nice to see him get rewarded. I have seen a weird segment of fans that have come back to say that he stings, that he should be traded. I ignore those people. He's had a little bit of a rough year, yes, but the points and the production are still there. Now, do I think he's having a season that I envisioned him to have? No, I predicted him to score 50 this year, so I'm taking the L on that. Uh, is he as consistent as he should be? No, but hopefully this goal tonight will really get him going for the rest of the season because, you know, it's he's definitely not been his usual dominant self this year compared to in recent years. Maybe he's playing through an injury. You saw he had a maintenance day in practice. Um, who knows? But, you know, really nice to see him get on the board. Zucker's able to get that uh, third one. Honestly, that second goal was a really weak goal from Hutchinson. Um, you can see that this was an AHL goalie. Um, playing and then Heinen Danton Heinen of all people ties the game really nice shot after you know he was on the line I believe it was with Raquel and Crosby in this one and they're able to tie it and then they probably should have won in regulation a great save by Hutchinson with about four and a half minutes left and then Sid gets the game winner in overtime and he is fired the hell up about it haven't really seen too many of those massive fist pumps from the captain but you know they were able to fire a lot of pucks on that, especially after that first period where that was honestly one of the worst periods of the season. The Penguins came out guns a blazing in the second and third periods. Um, in the second period, the Penguins had 69% of the shot attempts and then 69% of the scoring chances. In the third period, 72% of the shot attempts and 76% of the scoring chances. If you combine all those for high danger, in the second and third periods, Penguins had 18 high danger chances combined, five high danger chances against. So very solid job to really turn it up in those final two periods. And that timeout by Mike Sullivan definitely did wonders. I'll get to Casey DeSmith in just a second because he should not be left out of this comeback. I'm going to get to him in just a second. But, you know, great job by the Penguins to, I think, realize who they, are, who they were playing. The Columbus Blue Jackets, they are not good. They are letting You are letting guys like Lane Peterson score. That was his second goal of the year. I'm sorry. I feel like I know 95, 96% of the NHL players in this league. I have no idea who he is. Liam Fowdy also have basically no idea who he is. And they're letting these, you know, just making name players from EA Sports NHL score. It, it was honestly kind of funny. You know, they, they didn't even let Johnny Goudreau score, um, of all people. Um, Patrick Vaughn got a goal, but you know, I feel like he scores in most of their games at least, but, you know, great job by the Penguins. Overall, to end the game, the Penguins had 87 shot attempts, a good for 69.6% .6 of the shot attempts overall, 5v5, 47 scoring chances for, 19 scoring chances against, 25 high danger chances for, 9 high danger chances against, 4.89 expected goals at 5v5. They scored five goals. We all saw it. So that was a very deserved victory. 77% of the expected goals, 29%. Uh, for Columbus. If you go to all situations, it gets even better. Penguins have 67% of the shot attempts, 68% um, six, six, uh, of the swing chances, 73% of the high danger chances, 67% of the expected goals. Um, just a total dominant performance from the second period on. And again, if they probably would have played like this in the first period, they would have blown this team out like they've done the previous two times. It's obviously a big brother, little brother thing when it comes to Columbus. The Penguins are now 18-3-1. and three and one in their last 22 games against the Jackets. They have not. Um, they almost lost at home for the first time against them in quite a few years. Um, so, you know, they have that against the Blue Jackets. But still, you know, once the second period came around, I think someone must have said something in the locker room. Hey, you all do know who we're playing, right? And I think the Blue Jackets also realized, hey, we know what we're playing for, right? A spot for Connor Bedard because, you know, they're tanking, I think, at this point right now. They're playing for pride. But, you know, they're also kind of tanking. But really nice job by the Penguins to just realize who they were playing. I, I'm i probably maybe giving them a little too much credit there. But you know, that time out by Mike Sullivan, I think, really paid dividends. I understand he has definitely made some questionable decisions this year. But do not for a second think that they do not care about him as a coach. Do not for a second think that, you know, the message is going to stay or anything. I don't think a team comes back from four goals down. I don't care who you're playing. If you don't think Mike Sullivan, if they don't, if you don't think the coach is the right voice for your team, that's how I want to say that. Um, to end the segment, another massive reason, probably the second biggest reason. I probably should have talked about this a few minutes ago. Brilliant stuff from Casey DeSmith tonight. 
comes in relief, ice cold for Tristan Jari, who did not have a good game. A couple of goals were not really on him. The fourth goal, though, probably should have had back. That's the one that got him yanked. And he made some tremendous saves, especially in the third period. After the Penguins tied the game, they scored the three goals in four minutes to open the period. Right after, you know, makes the save on Patrick Laine, makes a save, I believe, on Rosalich, Goudreau. He was making 10 bell save after 10 bell save because the Penguins, they were just going running gun. Back and forth. That's what that that's what the way they wanted to play. I didn't really like it because they usually could have lost that game in regulation. They probably should have, uh, especially after you go down for nothing. But he was on his game tonight. They also do not win that game if it was not for Dismet. Congratulations to him. You know, glad to see. You know, I know he's been very inconsistent. Glad to see the inconsistency go in the right side of things compared to the bad side of things. You know, if Jari stays in net, I'm not really sure they win that game. It was just a very bad night for them. And honestly, you know, the Penguins, you know, outside of a couple of few rushes in the third period where DeSmith had to make some 10-bell saves, I thought they were playing pretty decent in front of them. You know, it's no secret that the Penguins have played better defensively in front of Jari than DeSmith this season. They're, if you go look at their heat maps on Hockey Viz, Penguins expected goals against 2.50 for, for Jari. Expected goals against for DeSmith, 2.85. There's a, a stark difference there. And a lot of the red is right in that 5, 10 to 15 feet range around the net, right? But for Jari, all that is blue, which means you're not allowing as many chances or goals from those areas in front of the net or on the slot area. So I don't really know what it is. They kind of, it should be the opposite. You should be playing a lot better in front of your backup goalie compared to your starter. But, you know, you know, for tonight, the rules reversed. They played horrendously in front of Jari. He didn't have a couple, he didn't have a prayer on some of those goals. But then with the Smith, they played a little bit better, even though he did have to come up with some good saves um, in the third period when that game was tied. But really good performance from him. I don't expect him to start on Thursday against the Islanders. I think that's going to be Tristan's game when he's healthy. But, you know, they got the goaltending that they needed to have um, in the final, you know, 35, 40 minutes um, of that game. Really solid stuff from the backup. But that does it for this segment. Coming up to end the show, we're going to get into some more miscellaneous thoughts. Plus, you know, why these horrendous starts need to stop happening, especially this time of year. And also why, you know, all of a sudden, look at the standings. There's potentially an opportunity to go a little bit higher with it, with them being only a few points behind the Rangers now. We'll get into that coming up after this commercial break. But first, it's time to talk about Athletic Beans. You know, I I, know, I, usually, I usually didn't have time you know, to work out in the morning, so that's one of the reasons why I love using Athletic Beans. I also wanted better gut health more energy, all that good stuff. So what is this? With one scoop of Athletic Greens, you're zoning 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source superfoods to help you start your day right. The special blend ingredients support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging. All of those things cost you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's also cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Also, has over 7,000 five-star reviews and it's recommended by numerous professional athletes. Right now, it's time to reclaim your immune system and arm yourself with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. There's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Beans is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, I'm back in this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. You want to follow me on Twitter, Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Anwarsar Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So let's jump right in back into it here um you know other miscellaneous thoughts they, they gotta start starting they gotta start stopping games oh, i just screwed that up they have to stop starting games out like this i'm sorry it is unacceptable to play that bad against one of the worst teams in hockey when you are in a fight for your lives to make the playoffs there is no guarantee for this team to get in do i like their odds right now better than i did about a week and a half ago Two weeks ago, I should say, absolutely freaking Lily. This team's won five out of six. They're three points up for the final spot off the Florida Panthers. They also have two games in hand on the Panthers. They're five points up on the Senators 
and the Sabres and same with the Washington Capitals as well. That said, you cannot start games like this even against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Honestly, any other team there outside of Anaheim or Arizona, you lose to. Like, and the Penguins, their their decision making was horrendous in that first period. The puck was they were making some really weird reads with the puck. I, I don't know what I was watching. They were, especially on the power play, way too much overpassing, p- passing the puck to, to no man's land, just which leads to more on man rushes. You know, even exiting the zone was a chore for them. I, I don't think there was no deflated pucks or anything like that, but it was still really weird to see them just play that bad in the first period, especially against a team that they've dominated over the years. I mean, this is, again, big brother, little brother. I mean, I'll be in Columbus in a couple of weeks for a concert to go see Steel Panther. Um, if you are a rock fan, so maybe you'll know that reference. But still, weird. You know, I, I just their decision-making was awful. Even the penalty kill in the first period was ter- was awful. And honestly, you know, people I, – I could rant about this for five, ten minutes, but probably not going, so I'll just do a short little rant. People have been saying like, oh, you know, the, the PKs, you know, it, it's going to be all, even worse now that the Teddy Bluger has gone. I'll just, I disagree with that because the PK was bad with him even when he was on there. It's only been a couple of games. This team has given up 21 goals on the PK in their last 21 games. That's pathetic. And one of the main things that I've noticed with it, look at how easy the Penguins are making it for the opposition to gain the zone. There's no pressure up. There's no pressure from the team exiting their defensive zone. And then when they pass the red line and even pass the blue line, they're not even letting it, trying to get them to dump the puck. They are giving them the zone freely, like literally how an adult passes out candy to kids on Halloween, and they're just letting the other team set up. It's like, what's the point of a penalty kill here? And, and, and yet I watched the Penguins power play, and it's a chore for them to gain the zone. It's It's very odd. Both special teams units have just been dreadful this season. Pickett had a nice little stretch, November, December. Since then, though, it's just been <laughs> power play all year. And a little bit, a couple of good stretches. <laughs> just terrible. <clears throat> if they, you know, I'll say this: if they do have an early exit, if they make the playoffs, I know they just extended a couple of contracts. I wouldn't be surprised if a new management staff comes in if if that happens. And they may and they may clean out the uh, some of the assistant coaches because this is, you know, if they just got extensions. We've seen a lot of regression from the units that they coach. Not good enough. Not good enough in the slightest. Um, those are my really my big thoughts on the special teams. Um, Sid Sid had a nice bounce back game after a little bit of a rough one down in Florida. I thought Gino had a much better game as well. Ricard Raquel, he's gone eight, nine straight games without a goal. I'm hoping that's going to break at some point. And overall, you know, this team is so weird. <laughs> like, you know, as, as my buddy said to me, I think this is probably the best way to describe the Penguins. They're not that good, but they're led by very talented players who have a huge will to win. That is probably the best way to describe this team right now. The top players are carrying them. They do not want to see a spring where there is no playoff hockey. A lot of the other players are passengers at this point. But, you know, just what a win. One of the wins of the year outside of maybe that one against Colorado, the one against Tampa Bay last week. I would probably put this one up there as one of their best comeback, just one of their best wins of the year, especially considering how bad they played in the first three. You know, I'm not – Sugar, I'm not just glossing over that fact. They were awful in those 20 minutes. They looked like they didn't even care. You heard fire Hextall chance. That's got to get cleaned up here down the stretch. I don't care who you're playing. <clears throat> Columbus Islanders on Thursday, <clears throat> Rangers, Flyers, Predators later on in the month. Don't care. You have to clean that stuff up. That's all there is to it. I don't think I've missed anything else. Well, Dmitry Kulikov's <clears throat> debut. Eh, I I didn't really like how he played tonight. I know it's one game, and I know he's played on the Ducks for most of the season, but I was watching him pretty closely in about two to three, four times when the Penguins had the puck in the offensive zone. This was this was even in the first period, and the second period, I should say. Puck would go back to the point, and it would die on his deck. A couple of times, it would just somehow flubber over, which 
know how his puck is right there. And um, it was just be really weird um, that, I don't know. He just did not play um, particularly well at all. His first game, they're playing 11-7. We'll have to see if that wow, how that changes going into Thursday. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Penguins podcast. I'll be back with another episode for you all on Wednesday. I will preview the game against the Islanders. Big one for this team. They're one point behind that right now. They got the games in hand. You have to win this one. You win this one in regulation. You go one point up and you have the games in hand on them. That would be huge. I know you don't play them the rest of the way. You're not going to play them in the playoffs, but this will be a big one for this team to win. We'll preview that one for Wednesday's episode. But again, thank you all so much for listening. Really, really appreciate it. Talk to you all soon. We'll have to see how this team plays on Thursday.